Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Thank you for joining us on Resurrection Sunday. Such a special day today. Come on, we're going to sing Glorious Day because today is glorious. So come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus.
Yeah, we're gonna sing hallelujah again.
Resurrection Sunday in the house this morning and what an amazing time of worship reminding us of who Christ is and what he has done for us. Amen. Well, welcome to church. It is my honour to welcome you this morning and you've already sat down. I was going to say introduce yourselves. and Get up again. Up you get. Everyone up. Up, up, up. It's a great time to be in the house this morning. Say hello to someone new. Give them a smile. Shake their hands. The problem is in this church, you probably will get to start talking. So just a quick hello. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. Amazing. Well, like we said, it is our privilege to welcome you in the house this morning, Easter Sunday. We absolutely love, love, love the house of God, especially this weekend, because as we've preached all week or in the build up to this week, this is the grand final. This is the time where we celebrate our King, our Saviour, our risen. Come on, give it up for Jesus in the house. That's awesome. So as we were doing our lovely welcome, we also would like to welcome any new people in the house this morning. So if you are here for the first time, please don't be shy. Give a little wave. I promise not everyone's looking. And our lovely, lovely host up the back there will be giving you a lovely welcome gift. So let's give it up for anyone that's new this morning. Awesome. You can see a couple of little hands waving. That's great. Fantastic. Well, like I said, it's my privilege to bring the announcements this morning. So just a few key events that are happening here at Centrepoint Church. So this Monday, the 18th, so that's tomorrow morning. Oh, is there something behind? Oh, it's like, <laughs> I'm like, did I do something? There we go. So this Monday, so tomorrow, Monday the 18th, we have our working bee down at our Melton campus. So It starts at 9am, roughly go to about midday. So you've still got the whole day free to get through what you need to get through. We know it's a long weekend. You want to enjoy it with your family and your friends. But honestly, what a better time to be with your friends or your family from church. So getting down there to Melton, helping them out with our new campus. And I believe a barbecue lunch will be provided as well. Yes, confirmation from Pastor Trish. So if that's not enough incentive, I don't know what is. So make sure you get down there tomorrow. And Luke will be there, exactly, this guy behind me. Awesome. And then on Friday week, the 29th of April, we have Man United here at Centre Point Church, Tullamarine. 7 p.m., we will have Peter James, who is here in the front row this morning. Welcome. We welcome you. He'll be sharing a word with all the men in the house. So please just bring along any men in your world that you have the courage to invite. I know these events always get an amazing turnout. The food's always there. And I know that everyone always leaves feeling very encouraged and very blessed. So if there's anyone in your world right now that you think would really benefit from this, have the courage to invite them. They're always an amazing night. And there's always some powerful testimonies to come from that as well. So that is Friday. Did I get that right? Friday. Friday, 27th of April. Beautiful. Then after the service today, hang back because in the foyer, we're going to be providing some morning tea. So on Friday, Good Friday, we had some hot cross buns. But now tonight, today, sorry, we're going wog style. We've got the panettone out. We've got the coffee machine going. So please make sure you head out there after the service. Make yourself welcome. Have some panettone. And I think I'm nearly getting through these. Yes, save the date. Mother's Day, the first Sunday of May, we will have our child dedication service here at Centre Point Church. So alongside Mother's Day, for anyone who'd like to dedicate their children, doesn't have to be babies in the Christian faith, we believe no matter what age it is, if it's your child under your care, under your house, you can dedicate them to God and you can bless them under your government. <laughs> guidance and covering so if you have any more questions about that please come and see our care team after the service or pastor trish we'll be happy to talk more about that with you we're dedicating our little amalia so we're looking forward to that and yeah we're really excited to celebrate that alongside mother's day a morning tea will be provided afterwards in this foyer so it's a great opportunity to invite family and friends as well it's a beautiful service so we invite you to that as well And of course, invite your mums, aunties, grandmas, all those special women in your life. We'd love to honour them that day as well. And that is all from me. So without further ado, kids, where are the kids in the house? Grow kids? No. No. Holidays. There you go. 
all good. So kids, stay where you are. Stay with your, stay with your mum and dad. They're all just looking at me like, I'm so confused. Sorry, guys, but promise there'll be some treats afterwards in the foyer. It'll make it all up, we promise. So kids, stay with your mums and dads, and I'm going to welcome Pastor Dom to the stage to give an offering thought this morning. Thank you. Before I get into it, just, uh, I don't know if one of you, one of the people here is looking for their phone. This was left in the ladies' bathroom. I didn't go get this. This was handed in. Just want to make that clear. But if someone's looking in their purse and going, where's my phone? Okay, there you go. Okay, we, we have a winner. Awesome. How good is that? Awesome. I didn't want it, it was a Samsung. Anyway, um... Not a plug. But anyway, how beautiful it is to be here on this morning. What an amazing weekend. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope your family's been blessed by your presence. I hope you've been able to catch up. It's been a while for a lot of people. Um, and the food just hasn't stopped on my end. So um, just fit into this shirt. But there is, I'm, I've been given the honour of giving a giving thought for our offering this morning and I'm going to change it around so the ways to give will be on the screen behind me I hope yes there is a giver station at the back there is envelopes on your chair if you feel that uh, you're still giving cash use the envelopes if you want to use a phone we have an app now you can use that that's one way of giving the other way is we're actually giving able to give through the cafe today so if you're not able to uh, use the back section the cafe will take uh, your gifts and offerings but my thought as I was thinking this weekend and actually I missed it I'm so sorry because beautiful Haley's standing there and handsome Frank they've got pens if you need pens put your hand up the phone threw me okay they're running around giving you pens so you can do what you've planned to do a nice offering but my giving thought this morning and I think it's actually such an honour to be, have been able to have given the privilege of giving a thought this morning on giving and I know this sometimes makes people feel uncomfortable but I, I'm not uncomfortable about uh, talking about giving and there's a reason hopefully I can explain it to you because it's a new perspective and this morning when I was dwelling on my thoughts of what I was going to speak about God just opened my heart my mind to a very beautiful um, thought. Why do I give? A few people have asked me in my life, why do you give, Dom? Why, what's the offering? The question is, why do you give to the church? That's the question. But my opportunities arises to be kind and in kindness answer the question. And for me... It's not that I'm giving to the church. It is my opportunity to deposit into the church. But I haven't given to the church. I've firstly given it up to God. The church is just where I deposit the funds. And then the church can do what it's called to do. You see, for me, giving is a heart's response. It is all about your heart. It is all about your relationship with God. It is all about your relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit and who's talking to you in your spirit. Your response to that is what gives you the desire to give back. And the church is one place we do that. And John 3.16 tells us that. And this weekend we really want people to understand that scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who should call upon him shall be saved. Understand that I was once in that seat as a lost person, a lost sheep, and I had the opportunity. And I understood that God first gave to me. So why is it important? Because he gave and he gave and he gave and he gave all of heaven through Jesus and I give because I am empty I give because I'm empty of pain I give because I'm empty of wrath I give because I'm empty of pride I give because I'm empty of jealousy I'm empty of guilt I'm empty 
of the debt of sin. And why am I able to give? Because there was a tomb that was empty. There was a stone that was rolled away. And when Jesus left that tomb empty, it left the opportunity for me to be emptied of everything that plagues my life. So why do I give? Because in 2 Corinthians 3.17 it says, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit is, there is freedom. Amen. I give because I am free. Come on, let's give it up. He's a champion. Come on, let's stand up. Come on. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus this morning. We worship you. Come on, shout out. Shout at the highest praise. He's a champion. He's the victor. He's the one who defeated death and sin. Yes, the stone is rolled away. And Jesus, we worship you this morning. We shout out from a, a rooftop of praise, from a heart of thanksgiving from a soul of gratitude that you are the one that we worship this morning. We want to declare to the spiritual realm that sin, you have been defeated. The enemy is no longer have a hold on you. And today we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. And everybody said, amen. amen. Please be seated. Wow, man. 
Oh, I, I just want to get the worship team up again. <laughs> you know what says to me I'm free? That I just want to praise Him. No matter what's going on. Life's going to be there. Life's going to be there whether you're sad or happy. It's going to be there. But what we know is going to be eternal is that our Jesus is waiting for us. In fact, the Bible tells me now that He has reserved a place for me right next to Him and I can live life with Him right now. Come on, we don't have to wait to go to eternity. Eternity has come to meet us right now. And church, we need to live it right now. Come on, I don't know if you know what's happening out there, but the end is coming. The end is coming, but not for you and I. For you and I, it's just the beginning. And we've got to take as many as we can with us. Come on, we've got to invite as many, and we've got to lead as many to come with us. Because I want them with me to marry our beautiful husband, Jesus, our Savior. And this morning, like Lara said, it's a grand final, man. This is the grand final of Christianity. If you can get your heart, your soul, your spirit around this, let me tell you, your life will never be the same again. Man, that video just reminded me of what happened between Good Friday and Sunday, which we are now calling and celebrating as Resurrection Sunday. Although on the surface, things looked dark. They look done and dusted. You know what? The enemy was out celebrating early. He was celebrating early. It reminded of me when in 2001, actually when I was preparing this, it reminded of me in 2001 when North Melbourne was playing Essendon. Yes, I'm going to bring the AFL because it's the God of this, this country. They need to turn their God to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, not to AFL. But let me use the AFL because that'll prick some people's ears. North Melbourne in 2001, close to half time, were winning by 69 points. Essendon were two goals. North Melbourne were 12. 69 points. And I was doing the the shuffle and, you know, I had my Essendon mates. A lot of Christians are 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 Essendon. And they had their head in their hands. And King Kerry, yeah, King Kerry, right? We found out what kind of king he is. He's just a man, just a man. And we were winning half time. But then there was the second half. It was the second half. And North Melbourne kicked another 12 goals, but Essendon kicked 25 in the second half. They went on to win by 12 points. Let me tell you, the enemy was celebrating when Jesus was on the cross and he came down and they put him in the tomb and he was celebrating. But let me tell you, they went too early because something was happening underneath. Something was happening in the unseen world, in the world of the spirit. There was movement. There was momentum going on. There was a motion that was happening. Yet humanity couldn't see it. And Matthew 12, 40 says it like this. For as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. 1 Peter 3, 19 says, So he, being Jesus, went and preached to the spirits in prison. Do you know that there were people that before Jesus was born, in the Old Testament that were believing for the coming Messiah and they were bound in prison. Jesus didn't forget about them. He went into the prisons and preached to them and set them free. Come on, listen, listen. The worst day in history is what we now call Good Friday. Hello? The worst day. Only God. Today we call Good Friday. It was the worst day because of the way sinful man dealt with a holy God, a loving God. But it was a good day because of the way a loving God dealt with the sin of man. You're in my sin. Come on, it's a good day. Let me tell you, Good Friday is a good day because you and I are now free from the power of it. You know, the one who surrendered authority back in the garden, his name was Adam. There was a second Adam, Jesus, on the cross who with his last breath 
shouted, it is finished. You hear me, devil? You hear me, demon? He didn't say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. And the reign of sin is finished. And today we celebrate that. I'm here to attest to you, and I'm sure many of you the same, that Jesus went into death. He went into hell. He went into Hades. And he confronted the enemy once and for all. And do you know what he said? I'm here to take back what's mine. I'm here to take back what's mine. And anyone this morning that receives the finished work of Jesus, it's called God's grace to mankind. Anyone who receives that, do you know what you're called? A son, a daughter of God. You're called a child of God. And let me tell you, let me listen to me right now. No devil can claim you. Come on. No demon can control you. No curse can stick to you. Why? Because greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. Come on. You, you deserve to give God a clap for that. Greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. I want to pick up the story this morning in Luke chapter 24. I want to read 12 verses. Here it says, But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in. But they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who's alive? He's not here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of the sinful man and be crucified and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this to them. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell the 11 disciples and everybody else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and several other women who told the apostles what happened. Here these women, faithful women. Come on, we've got beautiful women. We're going to celebrate them. In the next couple of weeks, do not men, 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 you need to listen to your women. Men, men, listen to me. Women, don't rise up yet. Relax. (laughs) Men, we need to care for our women. Our women are a picture of balance and the Holy Spirit in our life. I just wanted to add that, although it is all about Jesus today. But I just wanted to say to you that the women that you hold hands with, your wives, your children who are young women, let me tell you, these women are passionate about Jesus. And let's not forget that. Come on, let's not run ahead of our women. Let's not leave our women behind. But here it is. But the story sounded like nonsense to men. That's usually right, eh? When our wives are talking, yeah, yeah, Sounded like nonsense. So they didn't believe it. The men didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up because he was unbeliever. He had to go and check it out for himself. And ran to the tomb to look. Stooping in, he peered and saw the empty lining or linen wrappings. And he went home again, wondering what had happened. Come on, that's a a story. Of course you're not going to believe it. Of course, you're going to be puzzled. Come on, let's not just blame these people. Let's look at ourselves. The story sounded like nonsense, the Bible said. They didn't believe it, even when Jesus had previously told them in in days before what was going to happen, what was going to take place. They still didn't believe. And the question this morning is, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? Come on, the stone has been rolled away. And I've got a picture up there of the stone that's been rolled away. That's a massive stone. And when Jesus was buried there, they had guards. You want to hear a conspiracy story? Read the Bible. Conspiracy, don't worry about what's going out there. You know, the mafia didn't start all of this trouble. The Pharisees did. The Pharisees actually ruled the mafia. It's called the Roman Empire. Well, I'm telling you. Easy. Come on, the truth needs to be told. So these, these guards dropped dead, the Bible says. It was like they, they saw a ghost when the stone was rolled away. So the ones that could get up ran to the 
Pharisees and the high priests and the elders, and they said, man, this is, this is what happened. The stone was rolled away, and we were like dead men. Do you know what they did? They had a meeting. They had a conspiracy meeting. They said, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to pay you, and you're going to say what we're going to tell you. And what we're going to tell you is that during the night, his disciples came, beat you up, and took the body. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. That sounds believable, doesn't it? That's being tooted around some other religions right now. But here's the thing. I'm not worried about that. Because I know that death was proof that Jesus was human. Come on. But this is what I also know. That the the resurrection proves that he is God. So he's fully man and fully God. Here's a fact that we need to know and hold close to our hearts. No tomb was going to contain what love was about to release. The tomb couldn't hold Jesus. The grave couldn't hold Jesus. Death couldn't hold Jesus. Sin couldn't hold Jesus. He just had to go in there and do what he had to do. And that was for, to die for you and I and to take back what was his. You know, this love was about to restore hope again because it was hopeless. All the disciples left. Oh, Jesus hasn't, it hasn't worked out for us. What he said was going to happen didn't happen. I'm going to go back fishing. I wonder how many of us who've received Jesus and everything was all good, happy and clappy, but then it gets a little bit hard. And we might not hear from him for a little while and we're going back to what we are used to. Well, here's the thing. Love was about to restore again the relationship between man and God. See, Resurrection Sunday, today, God's crying out to us. Stop looking for the living in what's dead. As the song said, it's time for us to run out of the grave. We need to run out of the grave. The grave has no more power over you and I because it, did, it lost power over our Saviour Jesus. Come on, the stone between you and God has been removed. That stone's been removed. As Jesus walked out of there, so can you and I. Whatever the stumbling block was, whatever the wall of separation, the stone of separation was between you and God, whatever stopped you from seeing Him, today is a new day. I don't care if you're a Christian. You might be a Christian and you know what? You, you can't see the will of God for you anymore. You don't know what the plans and purposes are. Let me tell you, he wants to love you and he's removed that. And today he wants to remind you that today in your life, the stone is rolled away. Second Corinthians says this, and Dom shared one of the verses that I'm going to speak about. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. It's taken, when you turn to Jesus, the veil turns. The the veil goes when you turn to him. It's taken away. He takes it away. But when we turn away from him, there's a veil. It's called the world. And the world will give you a view that's going to keep you in the grave. But when we turn to him, that veil is, is torn. It's gone. And we see things from a kingdom perspective and we can enjoy and live life. For the spirit is, sorry, for the Lord is the spirit. And wherever, everybody say wherever. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Is that your experience? Are you free? Is the Scripture true or do we just read it? Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So here's the truth. If the truth has not set you free, you need to pay attention and address the lie that's binding you. Because it's the truth that sets you free. So if you're not free, you're not free. So you need to pay attention and address whatever it is that you're holding on to. Because it's not the truth. Because the truth sets you free to forgive. The truth sets you free to love. The truth sets you free to embrace. The truth sets you free to have mercy. Doesn't mean we're going to have a good day every day. But let me tell you, when you're having a bad day and when you're having a run in with someone, man, your spirit is not settled. You want to sort that out. Because you're, the truth setting you free. The Holy Spirit speaking to you. Come on, John. You don't, don't remain in the grave. Don't, don't put the old linen on your life, that life that has hatred and unforgiveness. Come on, this morning, it's a new day and the stone's been rolled away. And some of you need to get new your relationships. Come on, some of you need to get new your friendships. Some of you need to renew your call 
to Jesus. It's time to stop looking for life in these things that are empty. You know empty promises? Do you know expired and outdated relationships? Come on, some of us are trying to have relationships that are outdated. They're gone. They're not going in the same direction that that you're going. You need to lead them in the place where you're going, not submit and surrender and sit in an expired or outdated relationship. Come on, I'm speaking like this because the Lord's coming back. I'm speaking like this because I want you to walk out of that grave. In fact, run out of that grave and rejoice and know that your life is never going to be the same again. You've left all that stuff behind. Here's the thing. Those things in life that look like they have substance. You know those things that they look like they have substance? That you keep chasing year after year after year and getting the same result? That's insanity. What they are is they're like mirages. And when you enter into them, they're void. They're empty. They're fruitless. And the only fruit you get from that or the only emotion you get from that is hopelessness, helplessness, dissatisfaction. Where's God? Well, let me tell you, He's not where you are. He's not where you are. He he comes from a future and presents you with that. I'm going to talk about that right now. I've got good news. Because of the cross... You don't have to allow the things of the past to affect your present. Because of the cross, you don't have to allow the things of the past to affect your present. The cross is not just powerful, but it's also empty. Why? Why is it also empty? Can I tell you why? Because there's room, there's space for you to nail your past to the cross today. There's room and space for those things that easily weigh you down, as Hebrews says, those things that easily trip you up. Come on, some of you are getting tripped up by the things every day and you don't know what to do. I'm telling you today, there's space for you to go and nail that past that keeps coming into your present, that you can't even focus on the things of God, the plans of God, the purposes of God, because you've got this past that you're carrying because of guilt and shame. Let me tell you, God died for your guilt and shame. So when your guilt and shame comes up, you need to say, hey, it's on the cross. Jesus died for that. And some of us need to allow God to take our past and accept the present that he has for you and I. It's not only a present gift, but a present life that he's prepared for you and I. Let the resurrected Jesus exchange your past so that your past doesn't have a voice in your future. That is so powerful. That Jesus Christ has dumbed the voice of my past because I've nailed it to the cross. And it's just a noise when it comes up. There's that noise. Hey, guess what? 2,000 years ago, you were defeated. That, That, what, you're trying to bring guilt and shame? Hang on a second. Romans 8 says there's no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So if I'm feeling condemned, I might might moved away from being in him where there is no condemnation. Where now the veil's back because I've not turned to him because the Bible tells me if if I turn to him, the veil uh, is removed. Come on, do we know where we are? And this morning, I want to bring good news. And the good news is that he wants to speak into your future. Resurrection Sunday is where God traded the old sinful life for a new transformed life. Come on, we've got a transformed life. And the problem is we want to live the old life when our transformed life is tugging at us to follow the Holy Ghost. And we try and minister to the old life, but the old life, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, do not want to pastor your old life. That's why Jesus came, so that you would crucify your old life. Because your old life is not worthy to be resurrected. In fact, God doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Why would he sacrifice his only begotten son, the apple of his eye, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright morning star, the glory of... Why would he sacrifice him and then we try and bring our old life into this, into this theology? It's madness, people. And we need to let it go. Your culture, some of your culture you're bringing into the kingdom, some of that's not good. Some of it, it's good. You know, making salami and tomato sauce, that's okay. <laughs> but some of the ways we think. And get down, men, get down. Come on, you're leading your, 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 your families. Get down on a Friday night to Men's uh, Men United. We're going to be talking about mindsets. We're going to talk about the godly mindset. 
And Jesus Christ was, was, was crowned with thorns. Come on, he was crowned in that mind. And you know what? Some of, some of our mindsets are, are still carrying the life of the past. Sunday morning, come on, today is about a new life. Why? Resulting in God's forgiveness. That's why we have a new life. It's also been given to him by grace. As well, a new life of truth that brings freedom. And if you're not free, let me tell you, you haven't met the truth. And I don't want you to leave this morning. Don't be embarrassed. Please don't be ashamed. The shame would be you leaving without meeting the truth. A new life full of his unmatched love. Come on, nothing can rival the love of God. Nothing can match it. You know, it was mine and my wife's anniversary yesterday. Happy anniversary, beautiful. But I, there's nothing I could do that could match that love. My wife would probably differ and say a nice handbag, <laughs> diamond ring, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 no, I'll do that later. But there's a love that the Father has for you and I, and this represents how much he loved us. This empty cross represents how much he loved us, that he now is leading us into a future. You know, Romans 5.19 says this, because of one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. And verse 19b says, but because one other person, Jesus, obeyed God, many were made righteous. You know, the victory we talk about, the Christians talk about, the Christianity talks about, that's found in a cross, doesn't come by human effort. It's not my effort. I'll tell you how it comes when you stop trying. When you stop trying and you embrace God's grace that he's given to you, that's when you enjoy the victory. You enjoy the spoils of the kingdom life. And there's so many of us trying to do religion, trying to do what's right. Hear me? We need to do what Jesus has given us, and that is to love and forgive. We're going to come to a close. Can I have the team come up? It's by grace. It's not what I can do. It's what he has done already. Can you repeat that with me? It's not what I can do. It's what he has done already. Can we do it again? It's not what I can do. It's what he has done already. He's already done it. But am I going to receive it? Do you know you and everyone else has trouble? I, I've, I have trouble in life. Put your hand up if you've never had trouble. Because there's a word in the Bible that we can call you. <laughs> Come on, you, me, everybody, people you know have trouble. Jesus said that. What does he say? In this world you will have trouble. But, I love but, he says this, but take heart, I have already overcome the world. So we're going to have trouble. Some of us are trying to avoid it all the time. No, embrace Jesus. He'll take you on a path where you, won't, you may not have to go through that. Does that make sense? Many of us, like the children of Israel, we tried to go our own way 40 years when they were only 11 Ks away from the promised land. And I feel like sometimes we move away from the place that we should go. And that is in the arms of Jesus. Faith is not about a bad person becoming good. It's not. That's religion. Faith is about a dead person becoming alive. And before Jesus died and before I met Him, I was dead. I was existing as a person, but my soul was dead to God. And when I received His gracious gift, my Bible tells me that I come alive to Him. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 18 says this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a good person. Is that what it says? It doesn't say that, but that's what we think. It says we become a new person, which speaks about our identity. You are new. Don't worry about what your mate says, but you're a new person. You're a new creation. The old life is gone, not is going, is gone. And a new life has begun. But it's whether you want to choose to live in the new life or not. That's up to you. If you keep reverting to your old life, of course people are going to say, you're not changed. Nothing's changed in your life. You just preach to me. 
but your words fall to the ground. Your actions don't back up what you say. Why? Because I'm trying to live in the old life. I'm trying to bring the old life up to speed. No, the old life can't. It stinks. It's full of sin. It's shaping in iniquity. And Jesus come to die for it to set you free so that you would have His life. All of this is a gift from God that's called grace, who brought us back to Himself through Christ. So He gave it to us and brought us back to Himself. It's called destiny. Your destiny is to be back with Him. And look at what He's given us now. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to Him. Now we can be in commission with God. A lot of people want to be in commission with God when they don't know who they are, they don't understand God's grace, and they don't know what their destiny is. And we make a mess of it. I was there. But this morning, can I challenge you to get out of your grave? Whatever that stumbling block is, run away from it. Don't try and carry it. If you're burdened, Jesus says, all of you are heavy burden. Come to me and I'll give you what? Rest. I'm not going to give you more weight. He's going to say, I'll take that weight from you, but you've got to join yourself to me. What happens when we join ourselves to, to somebody? We learn of them. Jesus said, I want to, you to learn of me. And when you learn of me, I'm going to give you a weight to carry that's light. And let me tell you, do you know what it is? It's called God's love. And when you carry God's love, everything becomes light. It doesn't become personal. Oh, he told me off. She told me off. How dare you? That's old life stuff. New life. What's light? Says, man, I've got to get this right. Or let's walk away. Let's agree to disagree and walk away. Don't battle with this thing. Some of you are carrying so much weight. You're in the grave. Your life's in the grave. And today I want you to know that Jesus Christ has set you free. But are you free? If you're not, don't leave. Come on. We want you to come forward and experience this song that we're going to sing in a moment. See, God takes full responsibility for our destiny. He takes full responsibility for our destiny, as we just read in 2 Corinthians. And what He does is He walks towards us from the future to the present. Why? Because He knows what the end is. He knows what the end product is. Jeremiah says in 29, God says to Jeremiah, I knew you and formed you before you were in your mother's womb. He knows the end. And what He does, He works from the end to the present. And when He speaks in your life, He doesn't speak about the bad stuff. He speaks prophetically about where you are in the present so that you might go into the future. Come on, that's our God. Religion condemns you. Religion puts weight on you. But here's the thing. It's not all care and no responsibility. We have a responsibility. It's called our identity. We must take responsibility for our identity. We are sons and daughters of God. We have a way that we should go. And the way that we should go is to listen to the Holy Spirit whom God has given us. It's not about doing. It's about following and believing. It's about following what Jesus has put in front of us. So we're going to take responsibility for our identity and walk towards Him from the present to our future. That's called faith. And we can only please God by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. It's impossible to please God without faith. So we're going to walk from our present, not our past, but our present. He's made us a son and daughter of God. I know where, that, where I've got to go. I've got to go to His words. I've got to go what He says about forgiveness, about love, about mercy, what He says about patience, hospitality, giving. That's the area I've got to go. Does it mean it's easy? Absolutely not. But if I go in that area, do you know what's going to happen? Sooner or later, those worlds are going to collide. Your suddenly is going to happen and a big blue sky is going to open and the kingdom of heaven is going to come and live within your life. And you're going to live the rest of your days in the power of that. Come on, we need to sing that song. Why aren't we singing it? Come on, we need to sing that song. There's people here that need to get up and get out of your grave. You need to get up and get out of your grave. I don't know what that grave is, what it looks like. You want to stand up this morning. Do not be embarrassed. Come on.
volume here. Now just let me make something clear. When we decide to run out of the grave, doesn't mean everything's rosy. I'm not saying that this morning. And Jesus isn't saying that either because he says trouble will come. But what it does mean is that you will have the same transformed mind that's in Christ to deal with that trouble. Does that make sense? Not all trouble's gone because Jesus says, in this life, you will have trouble. But have heart, I have overcome the world. So who's overcome it? Not you, He has. So I've got to have the heart and the mind that Christ has. And this morning, those that are here or in your seats, come on, we need to put aside that mind. And maybe your mind is still in the grave. Come on, you need to run, leave your, that mind, that old mindset out. We're going to sing this one more time, then we're done. We're going we're gonna to leave that mindset out and we're going to leave with the mindset of Jesus, the new mindset. Come on, let's go. I need to rescue my silver celly for chain break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen. Thank you that you rose again. And Lord, you are alive. And what a glorious day it is. And Lord, we here at Center Point Church, Lord, we are just running out of that grave. We're leaving our past behind. We're leaving it to where you will deal with it. And Lord, into our present, you're going to bring the future, which is goodness and godliness and your grace until you return. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Have a great day.